the Saudi league's been wreaking havoc in the golfing world for a while now, and despite continued back and forth between the league's supporters and the PGA loyalists, there's still no end to this madness in sight. However, things have gotten really bitter now, as Greg Norman's turned his back on his father figure and golf legend Jack Nicklaus, saying that he's a hypocrite. Why did Norman resort to such language, though? Well, keep watching to find out. First up, Jack Nicklaus turned down LIV golf deal. These days, most people think of Tiger Woods when they think of golf, but if you ask someone who's a bit older, they definitely respond with Jack Nicklaus, who's arguably the greatest golfer in the history of the sport. Now, imagine you're starting a breakaway league that's trying to spice up the game of golf and put an end to the PGA's monopoly. You'd probably want to get the biggest names on board, right? So apparently, that's exactly what the Saudi League's management did, as it proposed a $140 million deal to Nicklaus to come and hold the reins to the new competition's direction. According to the 82-year-old, though, even a deal as massive as that wasn't enough to sway him away from the PGA. Plus, there are tons of other reasons behind not wanting to associate with a Saudi-funded league either. For instance, the country's horrible human rights track record makes it hard for anyone to support its cause. Oh, and of course, Jack Nicklaus' name will always be synonymous with the PGA since, well, he kind of helped start the whole thing. So it wouldn't have made sense for him to switch teams this late in his life anyway. Besides, it would have kind of tarnished his golf legacy anyway. Next, Greg Norman calls out Jack Nicklaus over his lies. When Jack Nicklaus turned down the offer from the Saudi-funded league, their second option was apparently Greg Norman, as he did end up becoming the CEO of the whole operation. And while he's a legend of the game, the Australian's been doing a ton of questionable stuff ever since his arrival at the helm of the LIV series. According to him, Nicklaus' story is completely false, and in reality, the 82-year-old was actually not against the idea of this breakaway league. Speaking to the Washington Post ahead of the LIV kickoff event, Norman even called Jack Nicklaus out, saying that he either must have had a short memory or he's a total hypocrite. On top of that, the Aussie also said that Jack attended a league presentation and even gave the upstart tour his blessing. As a matter of fact, the 18-time major champion also apparently said that the league is good for golf, as PGA's dominance has kind of dulled the game down over the years. Of course, these are Norman's words, so take them with a pinch of salt. Also, it could all be a ruse to start some drama and get some more eyeballs on the LIV golf tour. Whatever it is, though, seeing Greg Norman attack his mentor Nicholas like this is totally not cool, and even if he does want the golf league to succeed, this is definitely not the right way to promote it. And Norman is no stranger to controversy. Of course, this kinda has become the norm for Norman, since he's taken control of the breakaway Saudi league. Not only does he lash out at journalists who ask questions, but he's also not afraid to take shots at other PGA legends whom he probably admired and respected at one point. So when it comes to the LIV golf tour, it seems like everyone's fair game for Greg Norman as he continues to blindly defend the league despite its connections to the Saudi government. Actually, throwing that notion out, the tour is wholly funded by the government, which is even worse than having connections. But hey, apparently that's not enough of a reason to criticize it, according to Greg Norman. In fact, when asked about the Saudi-ordered killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi, the Australian said that it's a human error and that we all make mistakes. Now, if he would have said that about literally any ordinary stuff, it would have been fine. This is murder we're talking about, though, and saying stuff like you're going to learn from your quote-unquote mistakes just feels disingenuous. Greg Norman has been accused of sports washing. Given the power dynamics at play here, it's not very surprising to see Norman take these controversial stances. And honestly, he probably can't comment on this stuff anyway. After all, the Saudi government's been injecting a ton of money into the league. Plus, even when things aren't going so great for them, like the time when the PGA threatened to ban the league's participants, a couple of billion dollars are enough to put a band-aid over that. Now, you might think that the strategy of throwing money at their problems so openly isn't wise, but you'd be amazed at how successful the Saudi crown prince has been over the past few years when it comes to improving his international image. Called sports washing, this act of using sports to cover up the darker truths about the Saudi government and presenting a softer image in front of the world has been really effective, and Greg Norman's just a cog in this whole machinery. In fact, this rabbit hole goes way deeper than golf, as the crown prince has also made massive investments in football clubs, video game developers, and even wrestling, all under the guise of diversifying the economy. Also, judging by the rising popularity of the LIV Golf League, despite its criticisms, his strategy is definitely working. One little hurdle that's still standing in the new tour's way, though, is the PGA, which continues to promise punishments for golfers who compete in the Saudi-backed series. Whether these threats actually turn into penalties and bans, however, remains to be seen. Now, in other related news, John Ram defends the PGA during impassioned speech. With the LIV Golf Tour off and running, everyone's taking sides, and it truly feels like a civil war in the golf world. However, even though some top PGA players like Dustin Johnson, Ian Poulter, and Phil Mickelson have pledged
changed their allegiance to the new league, most of the current top golfers have started to stay behind and stick with the PGA. And when it comes to bearing the flag for the Golf Association, John Ram seems to be the front man. Speaking to the press at the US Open, he said that the PGA Tour has done an amazing job of giving him the best platform. Plus, the fact that you're always guaranteed to go against the best golfers in the world has been something that's been going on for hundreds of years and isn't going to stop anytime soon. The Saudi Golf Series, on the other hand, also includes older players who you might consider washed up. Oh, and of course, you can't rule out the prestige factor since all PGA trophies have a long history and a lineage of legendary winners. And that's exactly what Ram thinks as well. According to him, when you win an event like the Memorial Championship or Arnold Palmer's event at Bay Hill, there's a meaning to that which the other side can't provide. However, the 27-year-old did admit that he understands why people go to LIV Golf League. In his eyes, the Breakaway League is more of a retirement plan for old players, as they can get a nice compensation package and then sail off into the sunset. Next, Rory McIlroy not happy with LIV Golf Talk overshadowing US Open. These days, it feels like you can't escape the talk about the Breakaway Saudi League. Everywhere you look, someone's talking about it. So when it finally kicked off in London, people were obviously discussing it. Sadly for PGA, though, this coincided with the start of the US Open, which is easily one of the most prestigious competitions in the sport. And it seems like Rory McIlroy isn't too happy about all the LIV golf chatter either. Speaking to the press ahead of the event, he said that the US Open is one of the biggest tournaments in the world, yet the conversation is filled with something completely different, which is kind of sad. However, he did manage to sneak some shade in there too, as according to him, no amount of money will ever make the Saudi League even remotely comparable to these prestigious golf events. Lastly, Mickelson breaks radio silence about his PGA comeback. Ever since he hit two birds with one stone, back by criticizing both the PGA Tour and LIV Golf Series, Phil Mickelson's been kind of laying low, biding his time to finally come back and prepare for his next adventure. And we finally got to see him in person again at a press conference ahead of the US Open. Of course, the whole thing was being bombarded with questions about the Saudi Breakaway League. However, Mickelson took a pretty diplomatic stance, saying that he hopes to continue with the PGA while also taking part in the LIV Golf Series. According to him, he's earned that lifetime PGA Tour membership, so he should be free to decide his future. Of course, with the Pro Golfers Association threatening to ban players, that doesn't seem like a reality for now. With that said, Mickelson feels that it's sad that things had to come to this point, and that he'd lost sleep over the past week just thinking about his future. But he then quickly re-diverted his attention to the US Open, saying that he's fully prepared to launch a championship challenge. That's a wrap for this video. See you in the next one.